before the word goat started being bandied around everywhere. Back when Michael Jordan was still in diapers, the world of basketball knew who the goat was. It wasn't even a debate. If you ask every basketball player, then who the goat of basketball was. You'll only get one answer, Earl Manigault. In this video, we're going to talk about Earl the Goat Manigault, and why he got a movie made after his life, even though he didn't make it to the NBA. I promise you, this one is a banger. But before we go on, make sure that you are subscribed to the channel and don't forget to leave us a like below. Done. Now let's dive right into it. When asked who the greatest player he ever played against was, after a long and illustrious NBA career playing against many of the sports legends, basketball legend Kareem Abdul-Jabbar gave a surprising answer that would have to be Earl the Goat Mandel, a man who has variously been described by players and sports writers alike as the greatest basketball player to never play in the NBA. Now, opinions are like noses. But given the fact that Kareem Abdul-Jabbar himself is a top 10 all-time NBA player, and given the caliber of players that he's played against, his opinion on this holds a lot of weight. But let's look at the kind of player the GOAT was before looking at why he never made it to the NBA. Earl Manigal was born in 1945 in a rural area of Charleston, South Carolina. He grew up in extreme poverty and hardship. Earl, the youngest and nine children, was taken in by a woman named Mary Mongal when he was around seven years old, after it became clear that his parents were uninterested in raising him. At this point, this is looking like another grass to gray story. Initially living with Mary in what amounted to little more than a shack with no electricity, running water, or heating, Earl's prospects improved slightly when Mary uprooted and moved to Harlem in the hopes of providing Earl with a better life. But by that time, the damage had already been done. Earl had zero to no social skills, found it difficult to connect with other kids in school, and could not focus in class, seeming very uninterested in whatever he was being taught. He only had one thing he was interested in, and if you guessed basketball, you'd be right. Manigal had a small stature for a basketball player. He was only 6'1", but he used that to his advantage. His small stature, coupled with incredible quickness and almost superhuman leaping ability, made him a veritable legend on the streets of New York, and he could regularly be found hustling people out of money at playgrounds across the city during his formative teenage years. According to Abdul Jabber at the time, there weren't a whole lot of people who could do things with the basketball that Earl Manigal could. His speed and agility allowed him to create so many innovative ways to score. He was an artist as good with basketball as Beethoven was with a piano. Basketball was his sole outlet for expression, and boy did he express himself. Manigal earned the moniker as a goat during his adolescent years. There are numerous stories about the origin of the nickname, such as it being an acronym for greatest of all time, but this appears to not be the case. As Mango stated, it simply came from a high school teacher who constantly mispronounced his name as Manigote instead of its correct pronunciation of Manigolf. Whatever the origins of the nickname, it stuck, and it is still held in high regard in the Harlem courts where he once presided. After impressing at Benjamin Franklin High School in Harlem, he transferred to a North Carolina prep school where he attracted recruiters from college powerhouses such as Duke University, Indiana University, and the University of North Carolina. But he chose Johnson C. Smith University, a predominantly black institution where his grades plummeted and he fought with the coach over playing time. Mongol didn't just play in school, though. During his time on the streets, Mana Gold faced several of basketball's biggest names at the time, including the Harlem Globetrotters, Connie Hawkins, Earl the Pearl Monroe, and of course, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, who stated, Earl and I would get together on certain Saturday mornings and play a lot of three-on-three -three basketball in the park or wherever the real good games were being played. Earl was a more street player than I was, so he never received the same level of mainstream recognition that I did in high school. However, those who knew the game well knew Earl could play. Now, this is the part where Mongol is supposed to get his shitting gear and knuckle down and get drafted for the NBA. But this is not that kind of story, and Manigold never made the transition from the playgrounds to organized basketball. Manigold's skills as a player were unrivaled, but his academic performance at school was less than stellar. He was expelled as a result of smoking marijuana in the school bathroom during his senior year of high school. He then returned to Carolina to complete his education at Larenberg Institute, a prep school where he graduated with the second lowest grade in the year. When Mongal left school, his girlfriend at the time was pregnant. A combination of that pressure, plus the fact that he was out of school led mental straight into the life of drinking and drugs. But what really ruined his life was heroin. Earl Mongal used heroin like a maniac, 
and it quickly became the focus of his life off the court. According to him, I was frustrated because I was out of school. I just went and turned myself on I did heroin. I was messing with the stuff like it was the last of it. I'm not bragging I was doing so much of it. I didn't know there was any more left $100 or $500. If I had it, I would spend it now. That's some pretty sad stuff for such a promising player. Falling into the life of drugs and subsequently crime was the worst thing that could have happened at that point. Earl Manigault was arrested in 1969 for drug possession, and after a brief stint in prison, he came out and tried to change his life. But heroin being a cruel drug and it's pretty hard to stop once you get started. He was arrested a second time in 1977, this time not for drug possession, but for robbery. He wanted heroin so bad he literally stole to get it. Remember, kids never do drugs, simply a lose-lose. Earl Mongol tried to write his life after his second stint in the slammer and even tried to get back into professional basketball. But a combination of heroin ravaging his body and his two stints in prison meant he was just not the player he used to be anymore, and unfortunately, he couldn't cut it with the pros. According to Mongol, the drug dealer couldn't say no to the goat like so many others in the region. Say what you will of Earl the Goat Mangold, but it takes balls of steel to go take money from a drug dealer and then use that money to convince people not to do drugs. That's just wild. He remained in New York until he died in 1998 at the age of 53 after two heart operations and being rejected for a heart transplant due to his extremely poor health. To all who knew him, Earl Manigolf was a great basketball player. In fact, he could have been the first Michael Jordan, or he might have been to basketball while Muhammad Ali was to boxing. This was just a classic case of circumstances and bad decisions leading to wasted talent, and that brings us to the end of the video so make sure you leave a like below subscribe and put those notifications on so you'll be notified every time we post more great content. I'll see you in the next one. Thank you for watching.